In this video, I'm going to talk about and explain a little bit about the chi-square test for independence, sometimes called a contingency table analysis. And it's called that because we have a contingency table separated by these categories of whether or not a person wants to reduce the deficit or increase the deficit or has no opinion, and whether or not a person is female or male. So let's say we have these numbers gathered from a survey. The survey was taken, and uh, they asked females the same question as males, and um, the females responded as we see, and the males responded as we see in this table. Now, we have, just like with any hypothesis test, we have the null and alternate hypotheses. These are in words because this is a non-parametric test for this categorical um, data, meaning we don't have a parameter like mean. We're not talking about the, the mean mu or the proportion pi. So in words, the null hypothesis, there is independence, saying that uh, these, these categories do not have an effect on one another. And that would be to say that the, the females, whether you're female or male, y you tend to have the same opinion on reduce the deficit, or the distribution of the opinions in the population would be the same. The alternative hypothesis is that there is not independence, or at least one category has an effect on at least one other category. Now we only have only two categories here, but that's a, a general statement for a general alternate hypo uh, hypothesis for the test for independence hypothesis test. And what that means is that for the alternative hypothesis, we could say this in words saying, well, if you are female, you the distribution of females' opinions on this may be different from the distribution of males' opinions in the population on this. And at first glance, it might look that way. But as always with statistics, we don't just look at a first glance. We perform a formal hypothesis test than to make a decision about the null. So the, this test, uh, you, can, you can do this with a lot of different uh, software programs. And so I just made this sheet that, that just does all the formulas that you, that you have in a, a normal textbook for the chi-squared test for independence. Uh, so that's all this does. And, and you could make it yourself. You could just plug in all those formulas, or you can, you can find a, a software package that does that. But the result is the same, and that is we take a look at the expected values, and that is that's looking at if, if the distributions were the same between the male and the female, for their opinions, then that's what these expected values give. And then we look at the um, observed minus the expected. We have the observed up here in the blue, minus the expected values, and then square that, and then divide it by the expected values. Kind of similar to the test for goodness of fit, but we have an extra step in here because we've got, well, it's a contingency, t contingency table. There's more going on here. So we take that, and then we find the chi-square, uh, the area under the chi-square uh, curve, the probability distribution, uh, to the right of this chi-square uh, statistic. And, and I've got the, the sum of, of these numbers, and I've got that all kind of coded in, and it's just by formula, and then with a certain degrees of freedom, it's, it's the, the row minus 1 uh, multiplied by the, the columns minus 1 is the degrees of freedom. But in any event, you find the p-value, and it's with the chi-square distribution. Then you look at this p-value, and you make a decision. This is a very low p-value, 3.44e. This e is Excel language for times 10 to the power of. So 3.44 times 10 to the negative 10th. That's an extremely small p-value. So at just about any uh, significance level, you know, that alpha significance level, you would reject the null. So I'll write that in here. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. So that's like coming through here and saying, we don't like that. We don't think that that is something we're going to side with, that null hypothesis. In favor of the alternative, we're not going to accept the alternative hypothesis. We don't accept that. But we say that evidence suggests that that is uh, what might be what's going on. So evidence suggests 
there is not independence. So I'll say there is not in, oops. There is not independence um, between uh, the sex of a person and his or her opinion about about the uh, the deficit. So that's what we're saying. Now, what does that mean? That there's not that there is uh, not independence between those. Well, that means that if a politician were to to look at this this data, then the politician would say it looks like females and males see things differently on the on the deficit. They have different opinions. So if you see if you catch a politician. Uh, campaigning more strongly on specific issues depending on the demographics that he or she is speaking to then uh, you have statistics to thank for that because absolutely politicians will campaign and highlight um, different issues depending on the demographics they're speaking to because of of results like this and they they use statistics very much to decide um, how they're going to campaign and and to whom so that is an example for the chi-square test for independence